Welcome back. In this video, you'll learn about another type of loop, the for loop. Let's look once more at the visualization of a while loop from the last lesson. A while loop executes a particular block of code multiple times. This works well when you don't know in advance how many times you'll have to do something. But what if you know exactly how many times you'll have to do something? You should use a for loop. A for loop is a programming construct that allows you to execute code a predetermined number of times. Before picking apart exactly how a for loop works, let's look at a program that has a simple example of a for loop in it. The code inside the for loop repeats four times. Watch what happens when we print i instead. I'll explain this more later. Okay, a for loop looks like this. You say for i in range and then some number in parentheses, and then the body of the for loop contains code that will repeat that number of times. So as we saw, this prints hello four times. The thing in parentheses just has to be something that evaluates to an integer. It represents the number of times you want to do something. And of course, everything in the body is indented by one level. Now let's look for a second at the for loop that prints out i. In a for loop, i is actually a variable. More specifically, it's an int variable. It takes on a different value each time the body of the for loop runs. It starts at 0 and goes up by 1 each time, up to but not including the number given to range. The range function is what determines which values are assigned to i each time the body of the for loop runs. Changing the number in range changes what value i reaches before the for loop ends. In this case, it reaches 5, which is 1 less than 6. You can also tell the for loop to start at a number other than 0. To do this, give two numbers to range. The first number is the starting number, and the second number is 1 past the ending number. In this example, the variable i will start at 1, and it will gradually be incremented up to but not including 6. Finally, you can tell range to change i by a different step size than 1. In this example, i goes up by 2 each time. It still starts at 1 and goes up to but not including 6. Let's go back to the version of range that just needs one number. That number can also be a variable. Remember, it just needs to be an expression that evaluates to an integer. That means we can ask the user how many times our for loop should run. Okay, let's use this for something useful. One common problem you might use a for loop to solve is keeping a running tally of something. This slide shows what that loop might look like. Here's an example of a for loop used to sum the numbers from 0 through 3. We'll look at this in the editor in a second. Instead of just summing the numbers 0 through 3, we can also ask the user for four numbers that they'd like to add up. Finally, we can ask the user how many numbers they'd like to add. Alright, let's go through the two versions of the running total program. The first version is just going to add up four numbers. Uh, it's going to ask the user for each of those four numbers. So first, I'm going to create a variable called sum, and I'm going to set it to 0. Then I'm going to write a for loop that's going to go up to, but not including, 4. And each of these four times, I'm going to ask the user for a number, and that number I'm going to temporarily store in next. Enter a number. Every time they enter a number, I'm going to add that to sum by saying sum equals sum plus next. Then at the end of this, I can say print sum, and then I'm going to convert the sum to a string so that I can concatenate it. So let's give this a try. It asks me for a number. 10, 5, 3, negative 4, and it prints the sum. That looks right. Now let's ask the user how many numbers they want to add. So before we do any of this, we're going to need a variable called number of numbers, and we're going to set it to the result of this, how many numbers. And now, instead of doing this four times, we're going to do this number of numbers times. So now if I run this, I can say I only want to add up three numbers, and it's going to be one, two, and three, and then it stops after that. That's as far as the for loop goes. 